Mendelspark.com Advancing life science research, connecting people and ideas. We're with Philip Lamesh. He's from a small country in Europe, Luxembourg, in the lowlands, and he came to America to do his PhD in molecular biology at Harvard Medical School. He also works here in the Bay Area for both the Luxembourg Trade and Investment Office and the Carnegie Institute at Stanford. But as well as being a scientist, Philip is also an artist. He does fine art copper etchings. And we joined Philip at his studio in Berkeley, California, uh, to watch him make these etchings and go through the process with him. Uh, but first, uh, welcome Philip. Hi, thanks for having me. Tell us about your life as a scientist. What are you up to? Yeah, I, I, I moved to the Bay Area in 2007 uh, when I joined a team of genome annotators at Stanford. Uh, in addition to that, I became the uh, life sciences advisor to the Luxembourg Trade and Investment Office a couple of years ago. And our goal is to basically spread the word about the Luxembourg Personalized Medicine Initiative and find partners and collaborators for Luxembourg. Um, you know, we met uh, researchers from the academic setting, a lot of uh, people from um, small molecular diagnostic companies in the area, and of course, of uh, people from the very competitive field of uh, genome sequencing. It's been amazing so far. We have started several co collaborations already with uh, small companies here, and we're looking forward to many more in the future. So, and what are you doing with the Carnegie Institute? Well, um, so my background is in cancer biology, and I joined the uh, Carnegie uh, Institute in, in, uh, at Stanford um, to join a team of plant biologists, actually, to make sense and um, figure out all the different genes and uh, other uh, functional elements in the genome of Arabidopsis thaliana, which is the model for plant biology. Okay, so let's move on to your art. You're also an artist. Yeah. And we met you at your studio and saw the process. Yeah. So let's first start with a glimpse here into your finished work. Is there any relation between your pursuit of science and your pursuit of art? I think there's a lot of parallels between, you know, um, the, the process of thinking of science and, and, and actually, you know, uh, carrying out experiments and thinking about the art that you want to make, and especially in printmaking, uh, how the process works there. Um, you know, in, in the lab, you really have to think through every step of your experiment before you, you start. And um, the same thing is true in printmaking. You know, you use copper, you use acids, you use dilutions and time, timing. Um, so there's a lot of parallels there, and that's actually quite interesting. But what fascinates me so much in, in printmaking is how there's these little, these little accidents, these little unexpected events that can happen often add to the final product, while in research often it's detrimental to your experiment. Huh. But sometimes in research those accidents lead to... Yeah, there's a couple of examples like that, but um, typically that's, that's not the case. So. I've had many examples where, um, you know, overbiting your plate or, you know, where you didn't cover your plate exactly the right way and things like that just created a very interesting imagery that if you had planned, you would have never gotten in the same way. Uh -huh. So the art gives you a different dimension than like working with a scientific experiment. I think in the end it gives you much more freedom uh, than in, 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 in research where you have a very specific question while in art even though you have a picture in mind you know, especially in my case where we're very abstractly um, there's much more space to um, change directions, rethink what you want to do and often you come up with something very different from what you planned even though if you hadn't planned ahead of time it probably wouldn't have come out the same way or as, as nicely so you're moving back to Luxembourg, yeah. to a new job there. That's true. So tell us about that. So it's interesting. Luxembourg um, was not really known for being a center of uh, expertise in, in, in research until recently. But the Luxembourgish government has made a huge effort to um, bring more research to Luxembourg and attract scientists from all over the world. 
And as part of that, they built a bunch of new infrastructures, a new biobank, new research labs. They are in the process of building a new university. And uh, I'm one of the people who they were able to recruit back to Luxembourg. You know, a few years ago, I would have never thought I would go back, but the center that I'm uh, actually joining is called the LCSB, which stands for the Luxembourg Center for Systems Biomedicine, and it's focusing on uh, Parkinson's disease. So what are you going to do there? I'm going to be the head of science communication uh, with a couple of other people. Um, you know, it's a new initiative. Uh, personalized medicine is not a term that is in most people's vocabulary. At the same time, we're trying to uh, build a bunch of uh, retrospective, uh, retrospective studies which will require for the population to participate. You know, we need blood from a big cohort of patients to do this analysis and so it's very important for us to explain to the Luxembourgish population what this is all about, what does pop uh, personalized medicine really mean, what does genome sequencing mean, what is the ultimate goal and how can it be beneficial to all the people living in Luxembourg. Uh, so that's one of the goals. Um, Do you have any idea what the average Luxembourgish person knows or thinks about personalized medicine? Um, well, you know, I think there is uh, not a very big difference between what a pe person in Luxembourg knows about personalized medicine and those in the United States. Uh, most people remember vaguely, you know, what a genome is from school, but if you haven't studied biology or medicine, it ends there, and it can be very disconcerting when you hear about you know these initiatives that require genome sequencing you know um, they take your information and read it and they understand who you are what predispositions you have um, it can be very scary the privacy but issues privacy issues can, can be, be scary can, for the can average be person. scary yeah but i think in luxembourg at least talking to my friends to my family um, people understand very quickly when you explain to them what what the goals of these research projects are that they can be really beneficial to them. And, uh, and generally, they're very open once they understand what these projects really are. Well, we wish you the best with the new job. Thank you. And with your art. Thanks a lot.